Hi, I'm Mark Miklich, Technical Product Manager for Small Character Technologies here at Squid Inc. Uh, today's uh, training video is going to be uh, related to having uh, power issues with our Jetstream CIJ printer, specifically uh, having issues with the system actually powering on. All right, so again, this video is kind of centered around uh, problems with the printer just not turning on at all. So if we flip our power switch in the morning and we just get nothing, okay? Um, so we're gonna talk about a few different possible causes for this type of scenario. All right, so the first thing we wanna do uh, in this type of situation is verify the power source, okay? So the outlet, for example, that the printer's plugged into. Um, now we're not asking you, know, you to troubleshoot uh, an outlet or power source if you're not certified to do so. So um, you want to make sure you're certified or you have an electrician or someone who is uh, qualified to do that. But we want to verify the power source first before we start you know, cutting into the printer. Um, so I recommend starting there and then we'll kind of work our way forward. Uh, one other thing we want to look at too is just make sure our power cable is okay. So check your ends, make sure you know this isn't damaged or anything's frayed. Uh, and again, if you're qualified, you can meter this out too and just make sure that this is okay. Um, something really simple to look at and something you don't want to overlook if you're having issues turning your printer on. Okay, on the topic of power, um, so we just discussed you know verifying the power source first. Um, another item we're going to talk about that's kind of related to this whole situation is a line conditioner, okay? Um, now this is more of a pre-install item that should be addressed up front, uh, you know, when you're installing the Jetstream initially. Um, but line conditioner is great for if there's any concern for power surges or maybe noise uh, from other equipment on the same circuit. Um, the Squid Ink part number for this line conditioner is 200-4199. Again, these are fairly inexpensive and it's a good idea to have in an industrial environment, again, like I said, power surges, noises, uh, noise from other pieces of equipment, uh, things of that nature. But uh, these are really good to have to help protect your equipment or help protect your CIJ printer. All right, so if we verified our power source is okay, um, the next thing we're gonna look at is the actual power switch on our printer. Um, specifically, the first thing we're going to do is just check the pair of fuses that are inside this switch. Okay, so it's fairly easy to access the fuses on the printer. So uh, we've unplugged the system, um, something you need to do before we start working on components like this. Uh, and then we're just going to slide uh, this drawer out right here. So if you look right above where your uh, power cable plugs in, there's a little drawer. Um, this will slide out. Usually you're gonna want a little flathead screwdriver or something like that to position right underneath here and you can pop this out. Okay, if we slide this out, you'll see we do have a pair of fuses. Okay, these are four amp, 250 volt rated fuses. Um, it is typically really easy to see if one of these is uh, shot or blown for some reason. So you'll see the, the little rod inside there. This one is still intact. There's no breaks or anything in it. Um, and we will also meter this out just to be certain. But um, these, the fuses are really one of the first things you wanna take a peek at, make sure these are good uh, you know, before we go any further into the system. All right, we can also uh, meter out the fuse to make sure that we've still got continuity there. So uh, if you do have a digital multimeter, um, just set it to a low resistance setting. And all we're gonna do is put our leads on each end of the fuse. And you'll see on the meter, we're still okay here. Um, if this fuse was bad, you would just see this is open, okay? Um, so this is just a, another way to quickly verify that the fuse is okay. All right, if the fuses check out, um, we also wanna check the switch itself or the contacts inside the switch. Um, so you can remove the switch from the printer. So I'll show you how to access um, the back side of this to disconnect our leads. And then uh, there's just two screws that hold this into the chassis. So we'll take a look at that really quick. Um, again, it's critical uh, in this situation. If you're gonna take this out, make sure the printer is completely unplugged, no power to it or anything like that. To disconnect the power switch, we're gonna open up the front of the chassis. So again, this front panel, there are just two screws in each uh, corner, top corner. So we're gonna loosen those up. They do not have to come all the way out. OK, 
Okay, so just loosen those up. Front panel comes down. Now what we're gonna do first is just disconnect these connections to the back of the power switch before we pull it out. Okay, so now we're just gonna remove the entire switch uh, module from the printer. So again, there's just two screws here. We're just gonna back those out. Okay, simple as that. All right, so really what we're trying to do at this point with our switch is just test the, the contacts inside of here. So we're gonna uh, meter this out and make sure we've got continuity on our contacts. Um, so what you'll see is when we flip this on, um, if we're not seeing anything, if it's still showing is open, uh, it's possible that the contacts inside of here are bad. Um, so maybe a bunch of debris or dust or something over time has gotten inside of the switch, uh, has dirtied up the contacts, and we're just not getting a good connection. So we're going to check that out with the meter real quick. Um, if we do see that that's an issue, uh, what we would do is just replace the switch, okay? So it's, it's kind of tough to rip this apart just to get at those contacts and, and clean them out or fix them, whatever it might be. The Squid Ink part number uh, for this component is 2006603. Okay, and that's for this complete assembly right here. Okay, so right now our switch is in the off position. Um, so if we put our leads on here, for example, it's still gonna show as open on our meter. If we flip the switch on, you'll see that we've got continuity through this contact here. So we're gonna do that for both sides. If you flip it on and you're still seeing this is open, then it's likely your contacts or one of the contacts is bad. Um, or again, there's a, somehow a ton of debris in there and we just need to swap this out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, quickly reinstall our switch and then uh, we'll, uh, if, if this it tests out okay, um, our next step is to kind of look at the power supply in the system. So we'll briefly discuss that uh, after we reinstall our switch. All right, so our next step here uh, is troubleshooting the 24 volt power supply. Um, if you're not qualified to work on the power supply um, for safety reasons, you should not uh, be working on this component. Again, when it gets to this point, uh, to test the inputs and outputs, we'd typically have power uh, to the system. So uh, really, again, if you're not qualified at, at this point, you should not be working on the system. You would call your certified dealer uh, for support. All right, if you are qualified uh, to work on a jet stream at this level, if you're a factory trained uh, technician, for example, uh, we're gonna include an image in the video at this point uh, for the power supply. Uh, and what the inputs and outputs are. So we'll label everything out for you um, so you do know what you should be reading at each one. All right, uh, past the, the power supply, um, we can also look at the motherboard and the charge board in the system. There are power indicators on those components. Uh, that will be in a separate video dedicated to those items. All right, so that wraps up our video uh, for troubleshooting uh, issues with turning our Jetstream printer on. Uh, if you want to see more videos on this product or any of our other products, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also don't hesitate to head to squidink.com for even more information on our product line. Thanks again.